this video, we'll be reviewing an online high stakes cash game between Big Blind Bet and OTB Red Baron. Credit for this video goes to online high stakes poker, who posts some of the most insane cash game hands between the best players in the world. I will leave a link in the description for those that are interested in checking them out. So we are three handed here, and OTB Red Baron opens on the button with 122 Big Blinds with Jack of Spades, Jack of Clubs. So for the preflop ranges, I'll be testing out simple preflops multi-way solver, which allows you to define customized stack sizes, bet sizes, and rake to generate the GTO preflop ranges for your specific game. So here's the GTO button opening strategy in a three-handed game. I've given the button two size options here, 2.37x, which is the sizing OTB Red Baron chose, and 3x. As we can see, the solver does predominantly favor the smaller sizing here for most of the range. And if we compare this range to a Munker Solver 9 Max 150 Big Blind Sim, we see that the opening ranges are quite close, although the simple preflop button range is opening a smidgen wider, likely at least in part due to the smaller sizing. So here's the GTO Big Blind Defense range for Big Blind Bets who is holding King Queen of Spades. We have given the solver the option to raise 3.5x and 4.5x, which is the sizing Big Blind Bets chose, and the solver clearly prefers the 4.5x sizing when raising out of position. Comparing this defense range to Munker Solver, we see that simple preflop is defending significantly wider, likely due in part to the smaller sizing, as well as possibly due to this being a 3 max instead of a 9 max game. And we do see that King Queen of Spades as well as most other suited broadways are being raised with high frequency. Additionally, the solver is 3-betting the stronger offsuit broadway combos and pocket pairs down to pocket 8s as well for value. And to balance its range, the solver also bluffs with a number of suited connector combos that provide board coverage and the potential to hit massive hands, as well as some suited aces and kings which have strong blocking properties and the ability to draw to strong flushes. Given the big blind's relatively wide 3 betting range, we see that the button defends quite wide as well in position. All pocket pairs and most suited connectors are calling. Most broadway and suited aces and kings are calling as well. And the 4 betting range for the button is quite narrow. Nearly all queens plus are 4 betting for value, and for bluffs, interestingly the solver is choosing lower king x suited hands, and then some ace x offsuit hands likely for their blocking properties. In comparison, we see that Munker prefers raising with the suited aces, and also 4-bets some suited connectors as well at low frequency. Munker is also 4-betting most suited ace-king combos, while flatting most offsuit ace-king combos, which is the opposite of simple preflop. The flop comes 10-5-3 rainbow, and big blind bets continues with a 47% pot bet. Here we see that the solver is betting with virtually 100% of its range and is primarily splitting its sizings between this bet and a larger two-thirds pot bet, including with king queen of spades. And you'll often see the solver c-bet in a three-bet pot with high frequency and using a larger size out of position on this type of lower disconnected dry board, particularly in a cash game without an ante where the ranges should be narrower. If we take a look at 184 representative flops for this scenario and sort by the two-thirds pot sizing, we see that indeed the flops where this sizing is used most often are these low dry boards. So why is this? Well, this is likely primarily due to two main factors. One, the preflop aggressor's range advantage, and two, the preflop caller's mostly condensed capped range. Different people have different opinions on how to define range advantage, and there is likely no one objectively correct answer. However, in order to obtain at least an abstract sense of the concept, I think the first thing we need to understand fundamentally is the basic notion of thinking in terms of ranges. Personally, a simplified thought experiment that turned on the light switch for me was viewing poker as a game of placing wagers based on the probability that one player has a stronger holding than the other given the board and prior actions. Through that lens, one rough way of interpreting range advantage is by identifying the player that has a greater percentage of holdings in his range that can bet multiple streets for value. This is at least directionally true because ultimately, decision points in the game of poker are driven primarily by aggression. 
right? Most ranges are comprised of mediocre or weak hands that don't naturally want to play a large pot and oftentimes just want to get the showdown. It's really the top part of the range that can apply pressure and put the villain in difficult spots, not just for our strong value hands, but also for our bluffs. So taking this hand as an example, although these underpairs and even some of these strong aces have decent equity with a greater than 50% chance to win at showdown, in a 3-bet scenario where the ranges should be quite strong, these types of marginal hands generally should not be the primary drivers of action. Right, if we compare the ranges for both players, we see that OTB's range has a significantly greater number of underpairs, but nevertheless, the solver is attacking with its entire range in big blind bet shoes, likely due to his advantage in nuttish holdings, which carry much more weight. In a 3-bet pot on this type of dry board, with no straights or flushes present, it's really sets, overpairs, and stronger top pairs that mainly want to grow the pot. And although the preflop caller should have the advantage in sets, the percentage of combos in its entire range that make up these holdings is relatively low. Both players should have pocket tens here, so the preflop caller's advantage is really just in these lower sets, but they only make up 6 total possible combos, a very small proportion of OTB's range. In contrast, although obviously weaker than a set, the preflop aggressor will have a significant advantage in overpairs. If we assume that OTB would 4-bet most queens plus, this means big blind bets has an advantage of 18 possible overpair combos in his range, which can apply extreme pressure on multiple streets that a hand like weak top pair or worse will find very difficult to withstand given the preflop aggressor's relatively tight range. Additionally, on this low dry board, the preflop aggressor should be able to barrel on a number of turn cards since there is little opportunity for a straight and no opportunity for a flush to be made on the turn, and most high card turns will inure to the benefit of the preflop aggressor, who should have a proportional advantage in stronger Broadway combos as well. As a result, Big Blind Bet's range advantage is leveraged by the solver to bet nearly the entire rest of the range, even with hands that have no draws and very little equity. In contrast, if we examine some low but connected boards using range converters post-flop insights for a 6-max button versus big blind 3-bet scenario, we see that the C-bet frequency drops significantly. This is likely at least in part because of the probability of the preflop caller having a more nuttish holding increases dramatically. Right on this type of board, although the preflop aggressor still has the advantage in overpairs, overpairs are not as likely to triple barrel on a board like this as only the preflop caller has all the sets, two pairs, and straights, so the range advantage now shifts in his favor. So after we have established that big blind bets should be doing a lot of betting here, the next question to ask is what sizing should he use? Well, part of this analysis should be informed by both the SPR and the percentage of nuttish hands available given the board. In this hand, with the relatively shorter SPR and no straights or flushes possible, strong pairs will have high equity, so big blind bets having the significant overpair advantage should allow for larger bets. However, this is really only one part of the equation. In addition to thinking of the strength of our range and our specific hand, we should also examine the villain's range to ascertain how much of it can withstand larger bets, because the top of our range, which is primarily driving the action, should mostly want to attain max value and not simply take down the pot. In other words, in many c-betting scenarios, range advantage in and of itself is not solely determinative of bet sizing. For example, if we sort our flops by the boards where the preflop razor uses the smaller sizing most often, we see that it is filled with rainbow non-ace Broadway heavy flops. This is despite the fact that the preflop aggressor has an even larger equity advantage on most of these boards. A possible reason for this is because on a rainbow non-ace Broadway heavy board, there are far fewer combos in the preflop caller's range that can withstand a larger bet. Right, some of the preflop caller's underpairs should be folding to a larger bet, and there are fewer overcard outs on this type of board as well. In contrast, on the low disconnected board, the preflop caller will have a number of marginal hands that can and should call, particularly when playing in position. For example, a number of ace-kings and ace-queens are calling, and many other Broadway combos that also have a backdoor flush draw are calling as well. 
Additionally, on a lower board like this, the preflop aggressor should have a number of high card whiffs in its range, which means the preflop caller should also call more liberally with its weaker pairs as well, since there is a lower probability the preflop aggressor has made a strong hand. As such, although OTB's range is capped here, since there are a significant percentage of combos in his range that have decent equity, a larger bet is warranted with some frequency. So OTB decides to make a small raise here with his jacks, bumping it up 2.6x. Interestingly, we see that the solver is splitting its actions pretty evenly between flatting, raising 2.6x, and raising 3x. And it seems to often be the case that when the solver is mixing its play, you can often find conflicting underlying arguments for taking the various actions as well. One argument for flatting, I think, is that OTB appears to be somewhat in the proverbial way ahead or way behind scenario. Given that the preflop aggressor should have been c-betting nearly its entire range, Jax will be ahead of most of Big Blind Bet's holdings, so in position, OTB shouldn't mind allowing his opponent to continue to build the pot for him, whereas raising will cause Big Blind Bet's to fold out a significant portion of his bluffs that may have continued on the turn. However, jacks, while strong, aren't the nuts, so raising presents some risks because of the relatively prevalent proportion of bigger overpairs and sets in big blind bet's 3-bet range. On the other hand, there are a number of factors that favor raising this spot as well. For one, although quite strong here, jacks are still vulnerable to a number of overcards that may come out on the turn or river. Additionally, big blind bets should have a number of weaker holdings here that will put in more money on the flop facing a raise such as top pair, but may give up on certain turn or river cards after a call by OTB. So big blind bets decides to jam, whereas the solver is primarily just calling with king queen suited. However, interestingly, we see that jamming is also plus EV compared to folding when holding the backdoor flush draw, which is a bit surprising. So what on earth are these sickos doing? Well, one thing we need to keep in mind is that OTB's range is largely capped here, especially because he likely would have just flatted a number of his sets in position on a very dry board with the shorter SPR, since he would have at least two additional opportunities to get stacks in by the river. In that light, and given that there aren't really many natural bluffs on this dry board, bluffing with some overcard combos does make sense since you should have some outs if called. For example, we see that Ace Jack suited and King Jack suited are raising with decent frequency and are superior to raising King Queen since the Jack blocks really the only overpair that is prevalent in OTB's range since he should have been forebetting most of his Queen's preflop. We also see that a number of Ace Kings that block some of the Ace 10 combos and a number of gut shots are firing his bluffs here as well. In terms of value raises, given the relatively short SPR, we see that the solver is jamming with virtually all over pairs other than aces, as well as a number of top pairs. For our flatting range, since OTB's raise is relatively small, big blind bets will need to do quite a bit of defending. We see that the solver is defending all made hands, all front door straight draws, all Broadway combos that have backdoor flush draws, and finally a number of stronger ace x and king x combos. Facing the all-in, OTB makes the call with his overpair, and now that we're in polarized bluff catching territory, we see that the soul is calling with basically all pairs other than under pocket pairs. And you'll often see the solver prefer to call with non-pocket pairs instead of pocket pairs with even much higher rank, presumably since a non-pocket pair has more outs if behind. And to round out its defense range, the solver also is calling with its remaining ace kings and some of its gut shots holding the ace. So I thought this hand was interesting because it really exemplifies how the top players think in terms of ranges and not just their actual hand. For most of us mere mortals, the hyper-aggressive all-in by big blind bets may appear to be an alien maneuver. In fact, I think for many, even if they had the solver real-time in front of them, advising them that 4-bet jamming all-in 11k on the flop is plus EV against a capped range, it would still be very difficult to pull the trigger. But perhaps this is precisely why these guys are playing at the stakes they're playing at, 
because not only do they know what the right moves are, but they also have the guts to actually make them to gain very small edges. So that's our video for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay balanced.